Hi, my name is Julia. I'm a sophomore at Harvard. I'm concentrating in TDM, theater, dance, and media. And I'm here with Ashley, who you are graduating this semester? Yes, I am. <laughs> exciting. <laughs> exciting, yes, very. Also a little bit nerve wracking, but definitely exciting. So you are not only a Harvard student, you came from Harvard after serving in the military, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like that. And it definitely sometimes it hits me that I'm like, oh, I am almost 26 years old. And then you're like, oh, my gosh, I'm 26, going to be 26 years old. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I served four years in the United States Marine Corps. I am first gen, low income, a mother of three. I guess stepmother, but I consider myself um, mother, uh, and soon to be spouse of an active duty military as well. So getting all of the <laughs> all the titles, you just collecting a, them you all. Have a life behind you. <laughs> yeah, that is that's exciting stuff, and it's also a lot like. Be, yeah. Doing all that and being a college student. <laughs> it definitely was. There are moments where I'm like, uh, I'm losing my mind. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think all college students reach the point where they're like, I've lost my mind or I'm losing it or I know I'm in the process of losing it. So yeah. <laughs> at least I wasn't alone. I had a little bit more on my plate, I guess, than others or just more people to care about. I think a lot of students, I think most students can kind of understand that feeling of just craziness. And You live off campus. Yes, I do. And you have, you have, you know, all the benefits of living <laughs> off campus. But I kind of wonder, like, is obviously you then, like, experience Harvard different from any other or not any other, but, like, a lot of the students who are living on campus. Like, do you think that there's maybe what is kind of something that you are grateful for not having to be, you know, in the yard <laughs> or in the houses versus, like, maybe, like, is it different socially? kind of navigating through that? Definitely. I think um, I was very thankful that I stayed on campus my freshman year. Yeah. So Who were you? I was in Canada C. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> right next to Annenberg, right next to Science ooh. Center. So the cold <laughs> was not too uh, brutal for me. Mm -hmm. I was incredibly thankful. I was. I think that's one of the things I chose. I was like, I want to be alone, but I also want to be really yeah. close to what I want. So please, if you can compare combine the two and I appreciate yeah. it so <laughs> I would say being on campus is definitely very very helpful my freshman year and I tell all veterans or at least highly suggest if you're older and you're like hey like I'm I want to be alone especially because like veterans um the only way you live alone is if you are a sergeant um or you are no longer in base housing I was like I kind of want to be alone yeah <laughs> just just a little bit so but I was still surrounded by everyone, which definitely makes a difference. And I tell everyone to do it because Harvard is so big about building relationships and having just like those conversations with people. And when you're living off campus, you don't have those conversations. You, you're not spending the two o'clock nights or mornings, I guess you could say, with everyone else because you're 20 minutes away from campus. Yeah. Or if you live in downtown Boston, that's even further if you have to take the red line. Um, so... It's great because I can have my peace and I can have that quiet. Cause so yeah, being on campus, you're surrounded by people and you have that relationship. And every time that your house has an event, which is probably like every week at most houses, yeah. I'm, I really don't feel like walking 40 minutes to go hang out, especially as it gets colder. And they're like, oh, this event is at seven o'clock. Pitch black. It's freezing. I'm old. Yeah. I don't want to walk that far. And I was like, well… I'm cozy in bed. I can hang out with my pets. So there are moments like that where I really wish I could be a part of it. And it's like there are gives and takes, especially if you have like study sessions or they have events for your concentration. You're like, oh, that'd be great. And then maybe you missed out on it. Or when you do show up to the events, nobody knows who you are. They're very nice. Very like, oh, yeah. who are you? And you're like, oh, I'm, I'm Ashley. I live <laughs> on campus. I'm a part of the Elliott community. But I don't mean to take a – Take a, take a left turn. You take a left turn. That's perfectly but fine. <laughs> I'm theater. Yes. I'm as humanities as the humanities gets. <laughs> that is such a different, like, and I, it's such a different sort of thing. As, as someone who's not STEM, I feel like STEM students kind of have a lot of pressure on them, even if it's, you know, the workload is a workload, but still, yeah. I just feel like that there's a lot of, I don't want to say like unspoken expectations among students. Like how like how do you 
Yes, you do that. There it definitely is. There definitely is, especially because like here at Harvard, there's so many opportunities to study in a lab, to do some type of research. Mm-hmm. And I will say that's like kind of one of my um, regrets is that I wasn't able. I I tried to do research, mind you, not in STEM. I was trying to do it in psychology because the end goal is forensic psychology. So um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so I tried to do that, but I was like late to the game. My own fault. It happens. So there's like this expectation, like you're surrounded by all these opportunities. Why aren't you using them mm-hmm. kind of thing? And then you you run into people who are double majoring or double concentrating. And then they're also in a lab. And then one of their – because uh, one of their uh, classes is in a lab. So technically they're like in two labs. And you're like, how do you have time to sleep? Yeah. Like, That's so scary. <laughs> oh how God. are you alive right now? Like are you doing okay? Uh-huh. And they just seem like they're killing it. And you're like – very envious almost of that. So they're like things that you obviously sacrifice and things you have to do. And I will say that I regret not doing research. I regret not doing some of the things that so many other students have done and they highly suggest and they talk about really positive aspects of it. But I'm also not too regretful that I didn't do Mm -hmm. those things. Mm -hmm. And I will say that like one of my regrets is I'm currently this year taking 100 art, which is like advanced lab. It's Mm -hmm. a chem requirement, my favorite lab. Before oh. all this, I was like, I never want to be stuck in a lab because it was just miserable for me. I wasn't happy. I didn't really like it. It was very high stress and high strung. And you're like, I just want to get out of here. And advanced lab is 10 hours a week in lab. Okay. Uh, minimal. So there's stuff you do outside. And I was like, oh, God, it's going to be rough. But I had so much fun. Ooh. You get to choose which project. There's two different projects or technically, I guess – three different projects to one of them is split in two different avenues but I did the synthesis so I did molecular clues and I was like I say that now and I'm like oh my gosh like start of the semester I'd be yeah. like what are you talking about so there's yeah so I I really enjoyed it but um plus two I am very thankful that I'm not pre-med there's a lot of stress for the pre-med students to be Absolutely. not only research but also are you job shadowing are you talking – what are you doing this summer? What are you doing this winter? Yeah. And there's just like this big anxious bubble that hangs over one's head. And it's not even like other students are doing it. Like some might be they're like, oh, I'm doing all this. And you're like, mm-hmm. I'm doing none of those things. But I think a lot of it is like this kind of self-doubt that kind of creates. And you're like, am I doing enough to get into pre- uh, mm-hmm. med school? Am I doing enough to apply to the colleges or the grad schools that I want to after? So I definitely think it's kind of self-induced as awful as that sounds. People are like a little too stressed about things. I'm like, you're in college. This is a time to like be chill. (laughs) And and I will say it may not be the best hearing it from me because like some of my classes are like my final presentation. I did like I gave I gave a speech, you know, like <laughs> another another class, my final presentation. I did it. This was my Italian class. I did it on an artwork. Oh, that's you know, cool. it, it was actually really fun. I was very excited. <laughs> we See, all, well, that's good. Like, and yeah. I think that's too like finding as like any student, but specifically for some, because you are so high anxious and highly stressed. Mm-hmm. Find something that makes you happy. Find something that's good. Yes. you know, I, I think. I mean, and I tell my friends this and they think I'm joking, but like I've taken like some theater classes just because that's the track I'm on. I'm like, take a theater class. Take, you know. That art class. Take that that art class. class. Take, you know, sculpting 101, whatever that's called. Yeah. You know, because when you do it, it's really a great release. It's a great way to look at yourself, you know, and just also like. Have fun. It's different. It definitely yeah. is different. And having four classes of the same thing, it is brutal. I did that my freshman year. I I always tell everyone, I was like, learn from my mistakes. Don't do what I do did. I was dumb. I went in thinking I could handle things that I definitely couldn't have handled. Mm-hmm. And I just overstressed myself. So find something that makes you happy. Mm-hmm. And make sure that you're on a path that is going to lead to your happiness. Don't just do it because it's easy or don't do it because – you think it's going to make somebody else happy or it's just make sure the path you're on is your path and it's your story and that where you end up is where you want to end up. Exactly. Great. Have fun. <laughs> Have fun. And it's like it's, it's, it's going to be hard. I say that like it's super easy. Yeah, it's I was not, I was about to say, it's, it's not, not it's easy. not all fun. <laughs> like there is a lot of like work that does go into it, but there is something that's a little bit like liberating. What was something that you learned or that you did throughout your time here that you're so glad that you did it? 
I could give you like an academic learning, but I think for me, the biggest learning, hmm, that's pretty hard. Stumble into things. That's a weird way to, because it's not really something you learn. You literally just, you're not perfect. Um, make mistakes, stumble into things. When I showed up, my freshman, I did a pre, um, pre-orientation pre seminar. I did FIRE. So FIRE is for those who are, are coming from like underrepresented backgrounds okay. who don't have that scope of what college looks like and how to approach college with kind of like a step up. So they went around, they took us to OCS, they took us to the ARC, they took us to places uh, that was great for students and for getting help. And then how to approach office hours and go to office hours and where we can find our spots that are studying that you don't really know unless you're like a student and you've been here for three years. Mm -hmm. So all that. And it was phenomenal. And like sitting down and having conversations and kind of seeing like the backgrounds that they come from and where their walls are and that they're trying to break through those walls to get you are. You're at the perfect time in your life to not know anything, even though you're at Harvard and there's this expectation like, oh, you're at an Ivy League, like you should know everything. Mm -hmm. You don't and that's fine and it's you're young enough and innocent enough and naive enough, whatever you want to call it, to stumble into an office and be like, hey, I don't know what you're doing but I like it. Can I be a part of it? Yeah. And there's so many like vets who have be become a part of like research or done things because they just stumbled in. They're like, I yeah. want to get my hands dirty. I don't know what you're doing. It looks pretty cool. Do you need somebody to do it? Whether it's cleaning pipettes, whether <laughs> it's knocking. Okay, you talked for five minutes. You did this for five minutes. So stumble around, make mistakes, open office doors that you don't think you should even be in. And if you make a mistake and you're like, well, I didn't know. And then you take a step back and you go somewhere else. Like, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest thing, stumble into things. What is one thing that you're like the most proud of? I have to say my, uh, my time here as a veteran and kind of providing a voice for veterans and the expectations, or not expectations, but what the kind of the baggage we come with. You're like, hey, I know you have kids. I know you have family. Like these are the difficulties you're going to run into and this is how you're going to apply. These are the things that your scope of knowledge will help you with. This is where it might bite you in the butt. So working for um, the Undergraduate Admissions Council and talking to, to admissions and being like, hey, like this is what veterans are like approaching in this as. They may mm -hmm. not mean it this way, but this is what they're viewing it as when they're reading this website or when they're doing this and they're not gonna ask questions. Mm -hmm. So being able to kind of be the face of that, I guess one of the faces for that and asking questions and kind of being one of the initial veterans so that Harvard could kind of be Ooh. like, does this work? Yeah. Does this work? And you're like, it doesn't. <laughs> or this yeah. is amazing, let's do this add on more and more veterans. I think we're up to 60 veterans now. So Ooh. in four years, which is pretty amazing, or I guess yeah. three and a half. So it's, yeah, pretty amazing to see to go from having only seven to now 60. Yeah. And I think making the admissions process more, I don't want to say accessible, but I definitely think like that's definitely letting what Letting people know like what's going on because there's so many misconceptions there I are and i have to say the admissions um councils and just the people who work there are so sweet yeah exactly so, they are <laughs> so phenomenal and they've done so amazing things so many amazing things that when you talk to them you're like this why did i make it seem yeah. like you guys are like looking for problems yeah. to get rid of me I <laughs> and they're like the sweetest people. Yeah. They're like, we want to help you apply. We want yeah. you to get here. We want you to make sure you're happy and that you're at a place that will benefit you. Because like, mm -hmm. that's the biggest thing that I like thought. I was like, oh, they're just trying, trying to find the best of the best of the college. But it's not. They want to make sure that you're also happy on campus and the ability to call and ask questions to them, which mm -hmm. I did. And that's why I'm so thankful and probably why I'm here because I asked uh -huh. so many questions. But kind of prompting other veterans, it's like, ask questions. Mm -hmm. Admit you don't know. There's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Applications in general, you're looking at like $65 to $75 per school. Yes. Never mind sending your SATs. Never mind sending your ACTs. Never mind sending yeah. your AP scores. Like as a, a high school student, I remember like looking at all this stuff and I was like, this is a lot of money. And then applying as um, active duty at the time, I had some scope where I could get a few things waived because – we make no money. So it was like, okay, that's great. But I also had a form of income that 
when I had to pay, I had that availability. But at the same time, I was like, well, I have my GI Bill. Like that's going to assist me, not realizing that Harvard does have such a, a high financial aid scope. They can help so many people. Mm-hmm. Harvard knows you have so many other things going on and so many other focuses in academics and extracurriculars and everything outside of life that they're like, well, let's make the financial aid aspect yeah. a lot easier. Yeah, It will work out. Mm-hmm. It will definitely work out. Well. Don't stress. I say that, but I know you're going to stress. Yeah. Stress to a point where you don't make yourself yeah. sick because the reality, you're going to get that letter and you can make your decision. Mm-hmm. Do as much as you can to make sure that, that whatever is being told later for that financial aid, because like Harvard's going to do what they can to help you, but make sure Harvard is very aware of all your situation, kind of like with your application. If you don't tell them, they don't know. You're graduating. Yes. What What is graduation going to look like for you? What are we, as we say goodbye, <laughs> like what can we... So it's a little up in the air. I have some applications in right now. But Mm -hmm. I think the biggest thing is finding – so my my future is a little bit up in the air, partially not only finding a job, but my partner is deployed again. Um, Fiancé, so exciting, is um, deployed. So when is he going to be coming back is unknown. Where he's going to be coming back also kind of unknown. Is he staying there? Is he not? So it's like, do I stay here and get a job here and then just move when he comes back? That's what it's going to look like. I'm also looking at um, kind of planning the future for long term because I'm not going right into um, a grad school. I want to take the time working and and creating my a stable household now that hopefully we're all together soon. So looking at grad schools, finding out what path I want to take, if I want to do a PsyD or a PhD program and what that's going to look like as – um, a veteran and hopefully somebody who is working at the same time. So it's up in the air, but it's not at the same time. Their plans, everything's working in motion. It's just waiting for the approvals and the go aheads. But that's what that's what it's gonna look like. Exciting <laughs> and scary. It is and it is, but it's so like college is amazing. And being at Harvard has been absolutely amazing. And my story here and hopefully I'm leaving some positive things behind for others. But once you get to the end, and I took my last class, just this weight on your shoulders is suddenly gone. Like, Mm -hmm. yes, I have a few finals and papers that are due and studying I need to do, but I'm going to graduate. It's right there. Like, I, Mm -hmm. I, I am looking directly into the light, and I know that there's an end to it, and I've achieved another, um, accomplishment that I wanted to in my life. I've always wanted a degree, one of at least the bachelor's I know I want to do further. So it was like, okay, that stepping stone has been crossed off. I have accomplished it and I was able to accomplish it. No matter what was thrown at me, I did it. It was a rough ride. Don't get me wrong. Uh-huh. It's very rough sometimes. But I accomplished what I wanted to mm-hmm. and now it's the next steps and I'm so excited. Yay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for talking with of me course, about anytime. all this stuff. It's been a lot of fun. It's I'm, such. I'm so glad I can talk about it and laugh about <laughs> yeah. it. And I can laugh about it now because I'm yeah. not going through you're it. You're done. You're good. <laughs> you're out of here. Yes. So it's so great. Thank yeah. you so much. No, thank you.